All right, going to do a study today on God's herbal judgment. <laughs> I don't think this has ever been preached before. Uh, I think it's kind of safe to assume that. Another uh, very unique sermon. Um, did a little bit of a word study on the, the words herb and herbs in the King James Bible for my wife. Um, she's really getting into a lot of herbalism type of stuff. Fascinating subject. We'll be talking about that as we continue. But... I was quite surprised to actually see what the Bible says about herbs. Very interesting. And um, we're going to get into that today. So you can start out by going to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1 in your King James Bible. Don't waste your time with the Vatican versions. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11 through 13 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Interesting because he actually creates that before uh, the next one there, uh, verse 14, let there be lights in the firmament to divide the day from the night. And uh, basically basically creates the sun and the moon after he creates the herbs. Kind of an interesting thing there. But you'll see this thing throughout scripture. Herbs are often compared to grass. And a lot of people, they will mow their grass and not realize how many herbs they're cutting down. And how much health is actually there that they're missing because they're just considering it as grass or weeds or something like that. And it's actually herbs that God has designed and created. It's a rather fascinating thing. Look at verse 29, Genesis chapter 1, verse 29 through 31. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and the which is the fruit of a, tr of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Interesting. Back before the flood, I do believe that the Bible teaches that they were vegetarian. All right? Don't have to be today. There's plenty of scriptures to refute that whole thing. But here's my point. God gave man herb herbs and things for their health and i'll tell you what when you start to study the the healing uh, abilities of herbs and you start to actually apply them into your own life it is amazing i mean we're just we have been studying the herbal thing now for a little while but i would not consider us to be experts by any stretch of the imagination uh, my wife has we've been really investing in a lot of uh, materials so she can learn about herbs and herbology because she's also studied organic organic chemistry so she knows the toxicity of the pharmaceuticals more on that later but you have to replace it with something you can't just say pharmaceuticals are bad and horrible and terrible and there's really no cure for your sickness no the cures are out here there's so many different types of herbs and so many different cures and everything else out just in this little field alone here uh, there's a lot of medicinal herbal plants right here behind me all over this property and we're learning more and more i mean we're we're just we're fascinated by it we go places now and we're you know we stop along the road and we get out and we're looking at you know herbs or plants or things like this and people driving by probably thinking what are with these nuts over here <laughs> you know we're fascinated by god's herbs that he's created and when you actually start to study it and you realize what benefits these things can do for your health uh it's fascinating and God gave man herbs to be healed. Genesis chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. And there went up a mist, a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Hmm. So, herbs come up from the dirt. And so did you and I. Hmm. We are uh, earthy, you might say. Um, and it's interesting. I'm going to kind of get ahead of myself a little bit here. 
You say, well, what about pharmaceuticals? They're from the earth too. Um, well, they're from petrochemicals, okay? And petrochemicals do come out of the earth, but you see, they're formed, petroleum is formed by decomposed organic matter. So when you take a pharmaceutical drug, you are literally taking decomposed organic matter, rotted plants, rotted animals, and rotted people. That's a thought, isn't it? You got to take those pharmaceutical pills. Yeah, you're eating somebody, a dead decomposed body from thousands of years ago. The flood in the days of Noah. Yeah, that's going to make you healthy. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 through 19. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Okay? Um, there's a lot of good herbs out there, but there's also some, some bad plants out there that you need to avoid. And there's some plants that are going to cut you up, you know, the thorns and things like that, and thistles, that'll, that'll slice you up pretty bad as you're walking through there. All right? And I, I'm skipping over a lot of stuff here because I'm just trying to talk about herbs today. But you can read Genesis chapter 1 through 3, you know, in your own time. But look at verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. If you want to. If the pizza shop closed down in your local town, or if McDonald's isn't open by the time you came home from work, it... eat the herb of the field. Why? Well, because God's just kind of dense and he doesn't really know how to tell people how to cook food or whatever. No, because the herbs have healing properties in them that you're not going to find in anything else. And by the way, you say, well, well then, we, then herbs are superior to meat. Well, it depends on the kind of meat. If you go to a factory farm where they're using GMO corn or, or soy or whatever else to feed the, the animals, then yeah, they got a problem. But if you're eating grass-fed meat, you're getting all the benefits of the herbs of the field coming through in the meat. Free range chickens, same thing. Hmm. Look at verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You say, well, I have a gluten intolerance. I can't eat bread. Um, I, I have to go gluten-free. Okay, again, people say bread is unhealthy. Wheat is bad for you. Uh, what kind of wheat? Is it the GMO wheat of big ag that you're eating? Well, yeah, that's going to cause problems, allergic reactions and things. Again, the Bible talks a lot about wheat and bread and things like that. And we're going to see that later on as we continue. It's good for you, but only if you're eating the right kind. Raw milk is good for you if it's grass-fed. You can actually have raw milk that comes from grain-fed cattle, and it'll give you gas and all kinds of other problems, indigestion and things, because it gives the cow the same thing. Their stomach is not designed to digest grain. It's designed to digest grass. The herbs of the field. You see? This is what God intended out here. But you see, man can say, I can up my production. I can get better, you know... I can grow all this grain and I'll have more for the winter and stuff like this and everything else. I can make more money. Love of money is the root of all evil. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. You're not going to beat the book. Okay? This is an amazing book. And you do well to forget your, your prejudices about organized religion, and most of them are, you know, true. If you're somebody that's not a saved Christian, if you're not born again, forget about organized religion. Read the book for yourself. And you'll find amazing things in this King James Bible. Turn next to Genesis chapter 9. You say, I don't understand where the judgments come. We're getting there. You see Genesis chapters 1 through 3, God's giving herbs and they're good. We'll see where the judgment comes in. That's the interesting part. Genesis chapter 9, verses 1 through 4. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. They're no longer vegetarians. 
Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. In other words, don't eat raw meat. Okay? Don't eat a part of your placenta as a new mother that will help your, your milk flow better. And say, yeah, No. That's raw meat. You don't eat it. Okay? You say, well, the animals do. They're, they're mammals, and we're a mammal too. <laughs> okay, then you're de denying what the scriptures say. You know better than God that created you. I don't think so. Um, what I'm showing you here is God gave the grass, the green herb. He gave it in the Garden of Eden, after the Garden of Eden, after the fall, after sin entered in and death came. And he also gave it after the flood. He switches from vegetarian to now they can eat anything and he still puts that thing in there. Make sure you're eating the green herb. Make sure that that's part of your diet. And yet how many Americans, how many people, whatever you, you know, nationality you are, how many people even think about eating this as part of their diet? Very few. Very few. There's a reason for that. Next we're going to go to Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 9. Jesus Christ said in John 14, verse 6, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus saith unto them, is the first part of that. So, when you hear the truth about herbs and herbology, and it'll give you good life, and this is the way you should live, all those things are tied into Jesus Christ himself. So, why do most people reject all this out here? Because they reject Jesus Christ. And the Lord blinds their eyes. The Lord closes their eyes and says, Okay, you reject me. I'm not going to give you good health. Hmm. You say, what about the people that understand herbology and yet they don't want anything to do with Jesus? Let's look about that. Exodus chapter 9, verse 22 through 26. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be a hail in the land, in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire uh, ran along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail and fire mingled with the hail, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast, and the hail smote every herb of the field, and break every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. So wait a second. God gave the green herbs for man to make you healthy. And yet here in this judgment, God wipes it all out. What's going on? You can get to a point, these Egyptians, I'm sure, knew all about herbology. I'm sure that they had all kinds of uh, knowledge about how to heal themselves with herbs. The uh, um, fireweed seeds right now are, are blowing through the wind. It's not snowing. Um, that's not too far off, though, here in northern Maine, but another issue. The Egyptians had all kinds of knowledge of, of herbology, and yet the Lord, when he judged them, he said, and he wiped out all the herbs. Oh, you want to be healed, do you? You understand the healing, healing benefits of yarrow and the healing benefits of red raspberry leaf and, and of fireweed. And, and You understand those? You're feeling a little sick, are you? You're going to head out there into the field to be healed by the things that I've created, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to cut those things off. You reject me, you don't get the green herbs. And... Uh, you say, well, that's interesting, but what does that have to do with me today, here in the 21st century? Well, if you study the book of Revelation, chapter 11, we'll be getting there here in just a little bit, coming up soon. Um, you're going to see that Moses comes back and, in fact, repeats some things that hap happened back here in the book of Exodus. Hmm. Go to Exodus chapter 10. Verses 12 through 15. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt, and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. The hail didn't destroy all of it, wiped out most of it, but there was a few little herbs here and there. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the land and the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that night and all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there was no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened, and they did eat every herb of the land, and the, all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green things in the trees or in the herbs of the field throughout or excuse me, through all, all, through all the land of Egypt. <laughs> Get it out yet. Isn't that interesting? God's judgment. He gives herbs to make people healthy, but when people reject him, he says, I'm taking them away. You don't have time for me? Then you're not going to have access to my herbs out there that can heal you. Hmm. Go to Revelation chapter 8. Way back to the end of the Bible, the book of Revelation. And again, if you're not saved and you're watching this, I mean, get a King James Bible. I didn't say join my church and give me 10% of your income. I said get a King James Bible. And when you get it, you want to try to work out your relationship between you and God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Work out your relationship. You don't ever even have to contact me. You don't have to come and be part of my commune or my cult or call yourself a Denlinger writer. Or no. First Church of Denlinger or something. No, no, no. You and Jesus. See? My job as a preacher is to get to introduce you to Jesus Christ and to read His Word. To pick up a physical copy of this thing. Don't look it up online. Exodus chapter 8, verse 7. The fifth, excuse me, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. This hasn't happened yet. This is a future event that's prophesied. All green grass is burnt up. How are you going to heal yourself? You say, well, we have pharmaceuticals. Well, I'll get back to that in just a minute. Okay? Um, we're not going to need to worry because we have modern medical science. We have modern medicine to, to cure us. We'll talk about that. Um, God's going to burn up the green herbs again. This is beautiful out here today. Okay? I, I mean, it's lovely. But you know what? Time of Jacob's trouble, all gone. third of these trees gone. And by the way, if a third of the trees are burned up and all green grass is burned up, can you imagine the smoke that's going to be around? That's over all the earth, too, by the way. Not just some little geographic location. It's going to be worldwide destruction. It's going to be a nightmare. There's a way out, by the way, which I'll talk about later, too. Revelation chapter 11. I'll show you another prophecy that's coming in the future. Verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. You studied out the two witnesses. They're two men. And uh, it's Moses and Elijah. Again, I've proved that in other studies. Can't get into all that. Verse 5, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. Hmm. Just like what happened back there with Moses in the book of Exodus. It's going to happen again. Moses and Elijah are coming back for the nation of Israel because it's the time of Jacob's trouble. You don't have to go into that time. You can get saved. Just Not only just saved from your sin and saved from the penalty of sin that comes after death, which is eternity in hell. No, you can actually be saved from what's coming to this earth. And God can show you the truth of how to heal yourself out here before this time period comes. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Let's look at another reference to herbs. Deuteronomy 32. Let's 
verses 1 through 9. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, not Peter. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Uh, Jesus is speaking of himself. It doesn't say, it says, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Uh, Peter is the rock. He's coming in the future. No, he is the rock. Forget what the Catholics teach. They're satanic counterfeits of Christians. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of the, his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Hmm. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought, bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Oh, God didn't make me. It's uh, everything made itself. Uh, it's called a process of slow evolutionary, you know, yeah, uh, that's a philosophy. It's a rather stupid philosophy too. All this came from nothing accidentally. Okay, there was an explosion at some unknown time in the past and it created everything here. Uh, you're a fool if you believe that. Verse 7, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. It's funny because when you study herbology, you realize how much people knew about it in the past. And you'll find yourself looking for books back that were written in the 1800s or even further back. You gain a lot of wisdom from people that knew how to heal themselves back then. Ask thy father and he will show thee, thy elders and they will tell thee. Interesting again, because my grandfather was uh, very knowledgeable about wild edibles and herbs. And I remember, you know, at the time I was a, a little stupid little boy and I wasn't really interested in the... He'd take me for walks and things. We'd go out in the in the woods with, with uh, my grandfather and it was, oh, look at this and look at that and this does this and that does that. And it was just kind of, you know, because I was a worldly little brat. That's why. I didn't appreciate God's herbs like my grandfather did. But I grew to a point where I started to appreciate that stuff. And I realized how good those things made me feel when I ate them. Verse 8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Um, Israel, how many tribes are there according to Scripture? Twelve. How many nations then are there according to God? Twelve. Twelve national boundaries, I should say it that way. Not so much nations, but twelve national boundaries. God says there's twelve. The United Nations comes along and says, no, actually, by our count today, there's, and the Lord says, no, I don't care, 12. And uh, notice what the Bible says here. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, did you know that every nation, every national boundary has special herbs that belong in that country? And when they're brought to another country, it's uh, invasive. And they compete with the native herbs of that country. We came here to this property in 2017 is when we bought this land here. And uh, we came here and I remember I was taking pictures of this. I love to take pictures of these herbs and wild flowers and things. Uh, just I admire the beauty of what God created. And I remember I was all excited. I'm taking pictures of this flower and everything. Oh, it's so pretty. It's such a beautiful flower. Found out this year it's called spotted knapweed. It is an invasive plant. <laughs> And it creates basically a, a sort of a, what do you call it, like a nerve, you know, it, it's, it just basically renders plants around it unable to grow. Let's just say it that way without getting into anything too scientific here. But it's an invasive species. It doesn't belong in this area. And it creates problems for native plants. And a lot of times animals will come along and they'll look at it and they say, well, that doesn't belong here. I'm not going to be in this area. There's too much of this stuff around. I can't find enough of my food here in the area, so I'm going to walk away. God doesn't want herbs from other countries being put in here and move this stuff around, switching stuff from different boundaries and moving things around. God has given a special inheritance, you see, to nations. So, let's go to the next one here.
First Kings chapter 21. I'm going to try to do as much of this as possible. My battery's kind of low right now. So if the video cuts out, it'll be we'll come back in, in just a minute. <laughs> First Kings chapter 21. I'm going to show you that herbs actually had wealth to them in the past. First Kings 21 verses 1 through 4. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it, or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. You know, <laughs> Ahab was sulking. He didn't get to have that nice garden of herbs. Hmm. Do herbs have value? Yes, they do. Um, what would you give in exchange for your health? If you're a very, very rich, wealthy person and you have exotic cars and big mansions and a yacht of your own and you have, you know, whatever, the best of everything, jewelry and everything, and all of a sudden you get sick. What does all that, those worldly possessions, what do they all mean? They don't mean anything to you. You'd be willing to pay anything to have your health back, wouldn't you? So then really, what is the most valuable thing in the world? Your health. And where does true health come from? Herbs. Herbs. Second Kings. Go to the book of Second Kings, chapter 19 and verse 26. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power, they were dismayed and confounded, they were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. Again, people that are conquered, people that are ruined, and they're likened unto grass that's just gone. No ability to heal yourself. Nothing that you can do to remedy your situation. The Bible speaks very clearly that uh, herbs are very important. Job chapter 8. Job chapter 8, verses 11 through 17. Can the rush grow up without mire, and the flag grow without water? Talking about different types of plants that grow in marshy, uh, swampy type areas. And again, you know, you take cattails here in northern, you know, uh, America. Cattails are one of the most healthy wild edibles out there. Uh, just incredible. Verse 12, whilst it is yet in his greenness and not cut down, it withereth before any other herb. Hmm. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrites hope shall perish. God compares an herb dying to somebody that's a hypocrite dying whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust shall be a spider's web spider webs are very strong but you know what they can get knocked down really quickly and you can be really strong as an american and you have all your finances in your house and your mortgage this and that and your vehicle payment and, and, and all of a sudden you get wiped out real quick and that's coming by the way there's another recession that's coming and I'd say a depression, actually, that's going to come. And it's going to wipe out a lot of people's finances. Just like a spider web getting wiped out in a heavy wind. Or a uh, field of herbs getting wiped out in a fire. Verse 15. He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. Very true. He is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped about the heap, and seeth the place of stones. Had to read that because Jesus Christ gave a parable. Uh, I think it's um, what is it? Uh, Mark chapter four, the parable of the seed and the sower, and it talks about the the one seed. It's the stony ground here. The roots don't go deep enough. They go down. They hit rock. Wind comes and it blows it right down. 
lot of people that are like that. They put their hope in things of this world and don't give Jesus Christ any credit at all and bad times come and down they go. Job 38. Turn to Job 38. Job chapter 38, verse 25 through 27. Who hath divided a water course for the overflowing of waters, or a way for the lightning of thunder, to cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man, to satisfy the desolate and waste ground, and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth? thought that was an interesting reference to herbs. Again, uh, one of the best places is to find good herbs is out in the wild, wild harvested. You know, I mean, I, people can go and they can, they can grow a little herb garden and whatever else. I mean, you saw that with, you know, Ahab and, and things there. He wanted his you know, neighbor's herb garden. Um, yeah, you can grow herbs. I don't, I don't think that that's a problem, have an herb garden. But the best place to find them is going to be out in the mountains, out here. Okay? Found that to be interesting. Wild harvested, they call it. Uh, Psalm 37. Go to Psalm 37 in your Bible, King James Bible. Psalm 37, verses 1 through 13. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. God's judgment, you see. God's herbal judgment. God wants to judge a country or judge people. He'll take down the herbs. You can't heal yourself. Hey, you don't want to acknowledge me? I'm going to take your understanding of herbs away. So you're going to have all kinds of sickness. Is a modern man with all of modern medicine and all the wonders of modern medical technology, is modern man healthy or sick? Sick. Very sick. Go to the store all the time and I see these people and they just shuffle around. Just, I mean, they look like they just got out of the infirmary or something, you know, just, or maybe out of the morgue. I mean, you know, it's some of these people, I mean, just so unhealthy. And you know what? I used to be one of them. I used to be that sick. I was a sugar, caffeine, alcoholic. I'd eat junk food, go out to the fast food restaurants, getting sick. I'd, be, I'd get any kind of little sickness, I'd be sick for two or three weeks. Again, don't despair if you've messed up your life with a lot of junk food. You can get your health back. You can detox. You can, you can start to eat the right things. Cut the wrong things out of your diet. That's very important. Don't give me this thing, well, I can have herbal cures and still eat junk food. It doesn't work. Okay? You can restore your health. Let's continue. Uh, verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. What do we read back in the book of Genesis? In the Garden of Eden, after the Garden of Eden, after the flood. Eat the green herb of the field. Right there. Right here. That is a dandelion green. You can eat that. It's good. Very, very high in calcium. Saw a video recently, permaculture type of thing, and they said that dandelion is an indicator plant. It indicates that your, that your soil is compacted, number one. Number two, that your soil is low in calcium. Very high in calcium. They grow up with all the calcium, they die, and they add it back to the soil. And the Bible talks, by the way, about bitter herbs, too. These are bitter. They're not sweet. They don't taste like candy or something like that, which candy has actually excitotoxins in it, high fructose corn syrup and things like that that make you think it's good. And it's not really. But that's a whole other issue. But let's continue. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. All right, sorry about that. Battery died. But uh, verse 10, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Okay? Um, what's coming in the future is the time of Jacob's trouble when God pours out his judgment and his wrath. We read about that in the book of Revelation. And he wipes out all the wicked, and he destroys all of this out here. You say, well, that's just terrible. But he brings it back. And he brings it back in a time of peace, 1,000 years of peace on this earth when man actually gets along with animals. It's going to be an, an amazing time period. And Jesus Christ is going to be physically ruling from the, on the earth from the city of Jerusalem. Okay? It's going to be, uh, you know, if you're an environmentalist, uh, earthy type of a person, uh, that's the time that you want to get into there. Okay? It's going to be totally organic farming. Um, it's going to be a wonderful time, that time of no war and absolute peace and everything. It's going to be amazing. And the only way to get into it is not by going to church or wearing your Sunday best or you know tithing 10%. It's a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? Um, but let's uh, well, I'll read the last two verses here, the verses 12 and 13, then we'll go on to the next one. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. A lot of people do that to me here on YouTube. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. And all you enemies of mine out there, the Lord's laughing at you right now. I didn't say people that are saved that disagree or whatever. People can disagree with me. I'm not perfect. I understand that. But the wicked out there that try to destroy this ministry and destroy what I'm doing, the Lord's laughing at you and your day is coming. The Lord rebuke you. But let's, let's continue. Psalm 104. Psalm 104, verse 14 through 24. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. Grass for the cattle and herb for the service of man. That he may bring forth fruit, food out of the earth. Hmm. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. Real bread. Not the modern GMO stuff. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests. As for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills, hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the cunnies. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down. Thou mark, thou make Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey, and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together, and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work, and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. What are we reading about? Herbs? It's full of thy riches. There's so many herbs out here we're finding out, so many things. Red raspberry leaf, can't see any right now. Oh, there's some right over there. Here's uh, the, the pinkish flower thing there. It's fireweed. I mean, it just, I showed the dandelion green right over there. There's yarrow growing all over the property here. I mean, just so many herbs. And what they do for your health, you just, you, you know, can't be found in stores. Okay. And you can't, see, the whole thing is, too, here, here's the other thing. You say, well, yeah, but I can buy supplements and think. You can dry herbs to a certain extent, but they're going to lose their potency. Okay, and, and if you're drying them on a large scale as a big company to try to get them out there, you're going to have to need, need to put things in them so that they can be, be preserved for years and years and years, and thereby you're destroying the quality of them that much more. God designs things that you can go out into nature and get them when you need them. And you can live a really good life that way. I mean, you can, you're still going to die. I, I understand that. But uh, your quality of life is going to be that much better. Psalm 105, verse 34 and 35. 
He spake, and the locusts came, and caterpillars, and that without number, and did eat up all the herbs in their land, and devour the fruit of their ground. Again, God sends judgment. You don't want to follow the Lord's ways? You don't want to, you don't want to submit yourself to Him? Okay, then the Lord's going to take away the herbs. And man in his sin, man in his wickedness says, well, then we'll pull up this petroleum out of the ground and we'll make medicine out of that. And it's insanity when you think about it. They, they, you go to the doctor, they say, um, you, don't, you don't have, it's not that you're mentally unwell. You just have a chemical imbalance in your brain. That's why you're bipolar or autistic or you're ADHD or whatever else. You just have a chemical imbalance. You say, okay, doctor, how are you going to fix it? Well, with this petrochemical drug. So that's going to provide me with the things that are, I have an imbalance up here. So in other words, my brain produces petroleum. Huh? <laughs> if I have a chemical imbalance in my brain or in my body, how can you fix it with petrochemicals? Isn't that a little weird? I mean, let's, let's do the reverse for a minute here. I don't think that your, you know, your, your vehicle's not running right as well. And you say, what's going on? What's not getting enough gas? Okay, let me, uh, here, let me, let me just fix that quick here. Open up the gas tank, or, or you know, better yet, the injector or the carburetor. I'm just going to jam these in there. You say, huh? You can't fix a petroleum engine with herbs. You can't fix your body with petroleum. Duh. <laughs> oh, well, the, the, well, in some cases, I would agree with you, you know, but uh, I think that there are some times when people, you know, when petrochemical, you know, pharmaceuticals, um, that they have their use. They do cure some people. They don't cure anybody. Okay. You say, well, I, I know people get colds and they take antibiotics. Antibiotics kill. They don't cure. Okay. Understand that. It is impossible to get good health from toxic chemicals. I'll say it again. It is impossible to get good health from toxic chemicals. There is not one good thing in a pharmaceutical drug. You say, but we take certain elements of a plant out in the wild, a constituent, and we take that and we can take it in and then that's part of your drug. Uh, no, you're synthetically copying that. And if, even if you could use a little bit, like I had this one pharmacist actually tell me the one time that, well, we use penicillin. I said, you're using a synthetic variant of penicillin. Okay, you're, you're not taking pure penicillin. And even if you could, all the other petrochemicals would cancel out the healing ability of the natural penicillin. And how's it going to last on the shelf long enough for it to be good? It doesn't work. The pharmaceutical industry is witchcraft. If you, I, I guess you probably know that if you're out there. Pharmakia, the Greek word used translated in your King James Bible for witchcraft is the root word where pharmaceutical comes from. You're taking pharmaceutical drugs, you are involved in witchcraft, according to the Bible. Well, I just don't think you ought to be talking. <laughs> then keep taking your drugs and see how they do for you, okay? I mean, how do you know you get poisoned? You're working on your vehicle and, and, and gas sprays or whatever else, and you think, did I get any in my mouth? I, th I might have swallowed some of that. How do you know? All of a sudden, you start to feel lightheaded, and you, oh my word, I'm starting to get a bad headache. I must have breathed in fumes, or I must have oh, I got some in my mouth. Oh, I'm starting to feel nauseous, right? Then you'd say, I, got, I must have gotten some, petro, some, some petroleum or gas or whatever into me. And yet, what are the side effects of the uh, pharmaceutical drugs? Those exact things. You know why? Because you just swallowed them in the form of a pill. You say, well, well, you're telling people to get off drugs. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Well, what are we supposed to do? Research it for yourself. Go to Google and type in natural cures for diabetes, natural cures for Alzheimer's, natural cures for high blood pressure, natural cures, whatever you have. Research it. Find out what God made to cure you. Well, I should check with my doctor. <laughs> yeah, your doctor that's on the take that gets paid when he prescribes pharmaceuticals. ProPublica.com. Go check it out. Type in your doctor's name. See how much he's making from the pharmaceutical industry. It's disgusting. Proverbs 27. 
Proverbs chapter 27, verse 24 through 25. For riches are not forever, and doth the crown endure to every generation. Your riches are not forever. They're going to be coming to an end soon, by the way. The hay appeareth, and the tender grass showeth itself, and the herbs of the mountains are gathered. You want true riches? Get out into the mountains and gather some herbs. Hmm. There's an old uh, Irish folk song, I think it is. It talks about, will ye go, lassie go, and we'll all go together to pluck wild mountain thyme. Huh. Wild mountain thyme. T-H-Y-M-E, not T-I-M-E. <laughs> Time. Old people knew about that stuff. Isaiah 37. Let's go there next. Isaiah 37, verses 26 through 27. Hast thou not heard long ago have I, how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass, that thou shouldest be to lay waste defense cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power, they were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. Again, we read that earlier. But I find it very interesting. Another little interesting tidbit here is, did you know, Fireweed right here. This is fireweed right there. Did you know that fireweed actually thrives in ground that has been burned? There's literally an old fire pit over that way, and out of the ashes is growing fireweed. And it will actually restore the soil. And yet people come in and they say, Oh, these weeds, oh we gotta get rid of these weeds. Let's let's spray glyphosate on them. You're insane. Let God's herbs come in and heal the land. Make it fertile again. You say, well, my pastor is going to laugh about this. <laughs> I got a pastor and, and he loves his soda pop. He loves his McDonald's. He's on pharmaceutical pills. Yeah, and he's possessed with devils. I'll tell you that. You get some pastor, I don't care who he is, and he makes fun of herbs and makes fun of God's creation. And you want me to believe the guy's saved and has the Holy Spirit in him. After reading all that we've just read. I don't think so. How can you be saved and make fun of what God created? Isaiah 42, verses 13 through 15. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Coming in the future. I have long, long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. The Lord's coming and he's going to wipe out the herbs because that's where the cure is at. And some man in his wickedness says, let's bring an alchemy. We don't need what God created. Let's have our alchemy. What was the original intent of alchemy? To be able to make gold. They wanted to be able to chemically make gold. Because you see, you have to mine gold, and that's just too hard. <laughs> so let's, let's come up with a chemical process whereby we can make gold. And you say, well, they never did that. Oh, actually, they did. You see, they take petro petroleum, dead organic matter, including people who died in the flood, and they take that, that black gold, Texas tea, and they bring that black gold up, and then they sell it. And they make huge profits, whereby they can buy physical gold. Yes, alchemy did work. And these wicked Satanists that are in the petrochemical, pharmaceutical industry, they're preparing for the time of Jacob's trouble so that they can have their cures for when God wipes all this out. And they can come along and they can say, it's okay. Those locusts that came and they sting and the, the, the sting hurts and lasts for months and months and months. It's okay. Because you can come to me as a pharmacist and I can have a drug. I can do a prescription for you. 
You don't need the natural green herb. No, no. I'll write you out a prescription. Give you these uh, petrochemical drugs. Oh, you might have some side effects. You might have some nausea and, and, and you know, some headaches and some vomiting. And you might commit suicide as a result. But they're good for you. You say, well, you, you ought to be careful talking like this. I won't be careful. My God is Jesus Christ. I don't fear these stupid petrochemical people. A lot of these natural healing people and things like that, that they all of a sudden die mysterious deaths. You know why? Because they rejected Jesus Christ. They have no help coming from God. I don't fear any of these pharmaceutical people. I don't fear any of the, the big military industrial complex. I don't fear them because my God is Jesus Christ. Isaiah 66. A few more places to turn to here and then we'll be done. Isaiah 66, verse 12 through 14. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. You'll be like a little child, in other words. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Speaking of the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ is coming. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies. Did you know that there's actually an herb called bone set? Did you know that? And it actually can help you heal a broken bone? Huh? What? Really? There are, there are things in herbs that would just blow your mind. And when the Lord comes back, I believe he's going to have total herbal knowledge be passed out to people that are in that thousand year kingdom. And you fall down, you, you get cut really bad, the Lord's going to say, okay, take that plant right there, put that on that cut. Lord, I burned my hand. Oh, I burned my hand. Okay, here's some pearly everlasting over here. Just put that in your mouth, chew it up, make a little poultice, put that on there. You're good. Hey, there's some aloe vera over there. Put that on. Um, hey, there's some of this there. Put that Put, oh, you're, you're feeling a bit ups, upset stomach? Well, then you want to eat a little bit of this here. and I'll take care of you. God wants to take care of you like a father would take care of a child. That's what he wants. But you're going to go your own way. Man has evolved. Man, earth, and, and herbs and things have evolved along with man and whatever. God's going to take the herbs from you. If you're in a natural health but you reject Jesus Christ... You got bad times coming. Jeremiah chapter 12. Jeremiah chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Get off my Bible. A spider. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee, yet, le yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? That's what it looks like right now. They're getting away with it, but they're not. Thou hast planted them, yea, they have taken root. They grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. They'll talk about God. God bless America. You know, this, this incredible hypocrite, Donald Chump, you know, this guy is a Jesuit, hates the Lord hates you know the bible but oh he'll he'll say the right little things when he needs to when he's not you know trying to get in some new woman's you know we won't talk about that you know wicked fornicator adulterer but he's a man of god right, <laughs> right you people out there god is near in his mouth but far from his reins verse 3 but thou o lord knowest me thou hast seen me and tried mine heart toward thee Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. That's what's coming. The wicked are going to be prepared. They're, God's preparing them right now for the day of slaughter. That's coming. Verse 4. How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts are consumed and the birds because they said, He shall not see our last end. Wow. Wow. There's a very wicked satanic company in the state of Maine and also in Canada, New Brunswick and things, called Irving. Irving likes to rape and pillage land. 
I have worked in logging. I know about logging. There's good ways to selectively harvest and log land. Low impact ways that you can leave the forest looking pretty good. I understand you're going to hit some trees and whatever else when you're felling trees. I get it. All right. I've done work like that for a long time. But what I'm saying is Irving comes through. They literally will go in with mechanized big machines that have put hundreds of loggers out of work, which I find interesting. Oh, that's real good for the economy. No, it's not. A bunch of uh, guys coming in with their big mechanized machines, feller bunchers and things. They go in, they grab the tree with these big hydraulic hands, cut it off, slam the tree down, run it through the rollers, busting the branches off, cut it, and then the next one cut it and things. And after they do all that, and these big machines just running, mechanized run, machines just running over everything, smashing the herbs, smashing all kinds of wild edibles, you know, Half the times the guys have cancer and all kinds of suffering from all kinds of sickness and illness, and they're sitting there eating their Doritos, you know, and, and drinking a soda pop while they're running their machine. I'm a logger, <laughs> you know. Excuse me here, and I'm just going to go through. I'm going to, you know, it's it's so insane. And then if that's not bad enough, that they rape the land, they leave it just looking terrible. Then they come through and they spray glyphosate to kill off, among other things, red raspberries. You can go to Irving's website; they admit it. They literally, they don't even cover this up. They say, we spray glyphosate to cut down on the red raspberries and whatever else and things so that our, they, they come in and they plant the trees. God can't replenish the forest and things and God can't replenish things as it's meant to be and God can't bring in fireweed and other things like that to restore the soil. No, no, we're going to take care of it. We'll come in and jam our white pine trees in because that's where the big money's at and anything that's harmful to the white pine tree will destroy that too. And we'll just come through, and what's happened? The animals are disappearing. A lot of the animals, they're, they're losing their forage. They're, they're saying, there's nothing to eat on this land. We have to go someplace else. And animals, if they don't get enough to eat in the summer months, they die when winter comes. They don't have the fat stores. These idiots are destroying what God created. And that's why in the book of Revelation it talks about that thou shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Irving's time is coming. And if you're out there and you're for Irving and if you're working for Irving or whoever the, the CEO of Irving is, your damnation is going to be just. Let me tell you, what you're doing to God's creation is disgusting. We see it in this area. We drive around, beautiful forest, and next thing you know you go past there and it's just it looks like a bomb went off. Just trees just busted up and things. I mean, this place here was raped by some loggers like that. Destroyed this land. I had a guy who grew up literally right over there in that section. There's a little grove of trees. That's where his childhood home stood, burned down. They sold the property, and he came back here, and he was talking to me, and he said, he's an older man now, and he said, they destroyed this property. I said, this property was, was beautiful. And he said, it's destroyed now. And we're going to do our best to try and restore some things here and there, but it's a lot of work. It's a whole lot of work. What's going on? How long shall the land mourn? Did you know the land mourns? And the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. How many people even care about the herb of the field? They don't. Why? They're wicked. They dwell in a land where they could be cured of all their diseases. And yet they don't even care. The beasts are consumed in the birds because they said he shall not see our last end. They got the future figured out, you see. And God doesn't know what I'm planning. God doesn't know what I'm doing here on this land. I'm gonna this land since the 1960s has been sold and bought and sold and bought and sold. And people have come through here and they've just log raped it and log raped it and log raped it and log raped it. The last time was five years ago. And there's a lot of damage on this property. There are literally trees that they left, you know, oh, it's we've we've selective harvested and and they and they bark the trees when they're going through with their skitters and things, pulling these big logs out, and they just rip the whole side of the tree up, and now the trees are standing there dead. Oh, but they left some trees behind. It's selectable, so selective harvesting. Yeah, you leave the trees you leave. You want them to grow up and replenish the forest. You don't go through and destroy them with your skitters and your big equipment and things. Northern Maine is a is a holocaust of in, in when it comes to the logging industry. Okay? 
I can tell you that. I've talked to guys up here that, that have been in other states and they say, you you know, the logging industry in other states would never get away with this. That they do here in northern Maine. It's just disgusting. Now, they, now they're doing this thing too on side roads up here where they take these big uh, excavators and they got these big, you know, arms on them. They get this this thing, these big rollers, carbide tip rollers or whatever, and they just go, and they're just, just destroying, just smashing everything up and grinding it all up into pulp. They're wicked. Finally, let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. And it's so funny because they're, they're destroying all this stuff and they, you know, they'll laugh at me and things. Oh, you environmentalist. <laughs> yeah, okay, I used to work in logging, but I'm an environmentalist. Um, you know, and I still fell trees and things like that, but I'm an environmentalist nut because I complain about these guys destroying what God created. But, you know, it's so funny because these guys are sickly. They're sick and they're dying and they have all kinds of health issues and they can be cured, but they're destroying God's cure. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. We're out here, we're trying to dress these fields. We're trying to come through, and, and if we see invasive species, there's some spotted gnat weed, there's some purple loose strife, there's some Japanese honeysuckle. That stuff doesn't belong here. It's out of the bounds of its habitation. We're going to cut that stuff down. We're dressing it. And you know what it does? Blessings from God. Our health is improving. Me, that, that uh, my health was so bad, my appendix burst years ago because of the toxic factory I used to work in. I mean, I was not a picture of good health. <laughs> terrible, terrible health. Just destroying my health. And I feel better now today than I ever have in my life. At 44 years old, I feel better than I did when I was a teenager. Why? Because God's blessing me with the green herb of the field. Verse 8, But that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. Are you rejected of God? Have you rejected Him? He'll reject you if you reject Him, okay? <laughs> Obviously. I don't want anything to do with God. I don't want to hear about Jesus. I don't want anything. That's just, no, nah, don't want to hear about it. I believe in evolution. Okay, then God rejects you. And your end is to be burned. You say, well, that's a long time off. I'm still young. I'm still, okay. But you're going to live through a time when you're going to see all this stuff burned up, when the Lord's just going to take all these cures and say, you didn't want me? Then you don't get my herbs. And he's going to take these away. Still don't want me? Still too prideful to call upon me to be saved? Okay? Die in your sin. And you'll go to hell and you'll burn forever. You say, well, this time it's coming in the book of Revelation. What do I do about that? Uh, well, you can get saved. You can come to the Lord broken as a sinner. I don't expect you to clean up your whole life and whatever before you get saved. That's, that's not even possible. You need God's help. God will save you and he will show you the truth. I was a professing Christian for most of my life and I was false the whole time. I was a hypocrite. And I thought I was standing on all this stuff and whatever. I was a hypocrite. I had to come to a place where I was broken and say, God, I don't believe I'm saved. I don't believe I'm going to go to heaven when I die. My life is terrible. My life is a wreck. I'm about ready to blow my brains out. Please, God, save me. And he did. And then, over the course of years and years and years, God started to lead me away from the junk food and from the pharmaceutical type of stuff, and he started to point me towards nature. I was raised in the woods, but I was just like any other wicked person. I didn't care. Oh, these raspberries are good. These whatever other berries, wild cherries and, and mulberries and whatever else I grew up on. But I didn't understand the healing qualities of them. I didn't understand a lot about them. And then the Lord saved me. And I started to see more and more about these berries and about the other herbs and things that are out there. And I look forward to learning more and more about it. And uh, you get saved. And the Bible teaches that there's going to come a point in time when God says, okay, that last person is saved. And now before I pour out my judgment, before I wipe all this out, I'm going to catch you up to me. I'm going to bring you up here to keep you safe. Proven from the scriptures. I've proved it for many, many years. 
you can be saved today. You don't have to come here and, and you know, a special temple that you got to come and worship and give so much of your money or something. None of that stuff is in the scriptures, okay? Um, you can be saved where you are. You can have access to God, the creator of heaven and earth. He can save you today. The Bible says, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Get saved today so that he can start to show you how to heal yourself with this so that he can say, okay, I'm going to catch you up before my judgment, before I burn all of this. I'll catch you up and get you out of here so that your end won't be with those that are wicked. God's judgment is coming on those that destroy the environment. God's judgment is coming on those who rely on goo, petroleum goo to heal themselves and they're not even being healed by the way I pray that you look into these things you don't have to believe me get a King James Bible and read it for yourself okay please take heed to these things because God's judgment is nigh at hand it's not that far off look into these things today